every game. Like, we missed the game on Monday. There was no baseball. And I went through a little Tigers withdrawal. I'm not going to lie. I was very excited to get off the air yesterday with Woj and watch the Tigers and Brewers. Today, Spencer Turnbull, after a little, what do you have, an elbow issue or a neck issue, mm -hmm. he's back on the bump. They can go for seven in a row. Like, I'm totally wrapped up in this. However, I talked to a guy. A very, a very educated man in sports, my neighbor, who always talks to me about sports. And I look at him as the barometer of a Detroit sports fan. Like, he's pretty much feels what all Detroit sports fans feel. Like, I feel he's Joe Detroit, right? Mm -hmm. And he tells me yesterday as I'm walking the bounce that not only is he not caught up in the Tigers, but he doesn't even think the playoffs mean anything. And he also said that this is just a sham of a season. He's not watching. And wake him up when next year starts. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Why do you feel this way? He's like, dude, it's 60 games. It goes against everything baseball was ever meant to be. I'm like, who's to say that? So we got into this long argument about it. Well, that part, that part is true. Baseball, the way it's built, the foundation is not for 60 games. So I'll agree and with that's the man. Fine, but what are you going to do? I, know. Like, I have a quote. I have a quote, Stoney. I, I come prepared. Every now and then I'm like that, okay? I have a quote from a GM in Major League Baseball that happens to GM the White Sox, all right? Oh, Kenny Rick Williams. Hahn. No, Rick Hahn. Kenny Williams oh, is in the organization oh. still, but he's not the GM anymore. So Rick Hahn says the following. Something originally I'm stealing said something like not only... Wait, let me start this over. Someone originally I'm stealing said something like not only should this 2020 champion not have an asterisk next to it, it should have a gold star next to it. Because while it's different, it's presenting all sorts of unique challenges. And I would agree with you. I mean, if the Cardinals or Marlins win the championship, you're telling me that doesn't mean something with how much time they missed with COVID? How about various teams going through a 60-game season, beating the better teams? I mean, there are so many unique challenges. I do think this means something, but yet so many people just write it off. So I want to know from people, why are you so quick to write this thing off? Why are you so quick not to get excited by this weird season? I think the reason not to get excited, if there is, I'm not excited, excited yet. I'm more interested in as if they win, keep winning games, obviously my interest is and excitement level is going to go up, is because you just look at what's there on the team and you're sitting there saying, um, they're really not that good. I think, I think that's what it is. If you Even in a 60-game season, if, if, if they were like the Padres, you'd be so pumped, I would think. Well, you know? I'll tell you why you're wrong, though. Okay. First of all, who's to say that they can't turn into the Padres? I mean, the Padres have so many young superstars, and, you know, they actually went out at the trade deadline or, or um, free agency. They got Machado. They got Hosmer. Yeah, but, but, but hold but on. I, so I, I'll, I'll answer that question right now. As, as much as I praise the Vila for getting guys like, you know, Reyes, Candelario, as far as position players, they don't have superstar. They, they have good. Right. They might have good players. That's why I, I'm not that. But Stoney, you said this isn't for real. You you said people know this isn't for real. They look at the team and said, okay, you know this team really. They went through a nine game losing streak. Like they were rock bottom. Any other team, I truly feel in this weird bastardized season would fold up shop. They've come back. They won what, eight of ten against four very good teams, the Twins, the Cubs, the Indians, and who am I missing, the Brewers. So, like, that in itself tells you, I think, everything you need to know, doesn't it? I know how bad they were last year. Right. And I think, we think they're probably going to lose 90 games next year. So there's, like, no symmetry or normal building of a team that we revere right. in the history of this town because we've never had that out of nowhere true champion. I know the 04 Pistons was a slightly out of nowhere, but they were still a two seed. Yeah, they won the, They were in the final four the year before. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, this is kind of the equivalent of, you know, being the eighth-seeded L.A. Kings getting in and winning the whole dang thing, you know? Right. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, but that, at least that's a legitimate full season. I mean, to me, I, I'll just, I'll, my situation, my son is watching the games. I'm watching it with him. I'm glad we have this. It's cool. Um, you know, if they were to make the playoffs and then, Next year to lose 100 games, you know, there's going to be some explaining to do on how exactly this goes down that he won't fully explain. But right. I understand how people can't enjoy it. And, you know, you've seen some really great stories like Daniel Norris. What a, what a great job he's great doing. Story. Yes. 
for these middle relief games where Fulmer can't go that far or Miser Scooble. And I just want to ask you guys quick, how would you set up the uh, playoff rotation? <laughs> yes! Yes! Turnbull Boyd. And then I think you got to go Fulmer and then Norris. As the, so you would actually use the opener in some, to some degree. Well, Scooble like keeps, it, if Scooble keeps pitching the, the way he's doing. If Scooble keeps pitching the way he's doing, Mize hopefully would be a little better. I think Scooble would be the f head of Mize right well, now. If they would win the first series and get to the second round, right. then the fourth starter would be right. Scooble Mize. Right. God, I love when we tell things. I'm getting excited. I, I, I love this conversation. You want to ask Guardi about 27 it? games left in the yeah. type of playoff rotation. I dare you to ask but I, I really don't. I don't want you to, but I'm just saying I'm just kidding. All right, I'm talking about Well, I know. I think that could be a good last question. Um, skip, skip. Um, who would be your, who's going to be your starter in game one? Um, what do you even call that? It's not the ALDS. When, when, call that when will you start setting up the rotation? Yeah. <laughs> do you already, and I think it's legit. Do you already know in your mind, if you thought about it, have you fantasized you know about what your playoff Jeff, rotation would look like? Jeff, you have a voice. You can, you can ask him that no. question.
104 to 102 victory over Oklahoma City. Miami would beat Milwaukee 116 to 114. The Heat now with a surprising two games to none lead over the Bucks in that second round series. Leonard Fournette won't have to leave the state of Florida to play NFL football this upcoming season. That's because the former Jacksonville Jaguar signed a one-year deal last night to play for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. From the Ticket Update Desk, I'm Tony Ortiz. For more, stay tuned to 97.1 The Ticket and Radio.com. intro because I gave you one the last no, time? No, 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 no. I'm hoping that you don't. All right. It's, it's, it's John Jansen. Hi, John. Thanks. Come oh. on. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. It's. It, I'm glad that the Tigers won on Tuesday night because I was worried that I brought it up. Like, I planted my flag last time, and they went on a eight-game losing streak. Right. I didn't plant a flag. I just had said a few nice things about our Tigers. Yeah. They won Tuesday night, so that gets me off the hook for last night's loss, right? Yeah, it does. And we, you know, we all said nice things about the Tigers after uh, after, after Tuesday's night, Tuesday night's game. And, uh, Do you ever feel like you're the jinx sometimes? Me? I was born the jinx. <laughs> Come on. Gub, Gub can give you a litany of poor predictions and things like that that I've made over the years that are just classics. Yeah. Do you want a couple? Uh, I will. Uh, yes, I do. I, right. I would love some examples. So in 2004, Stoney's uh, proclaimed when the Lions beat the Packers at home that Brett Favre would never play in a playoff game again. <laughs> he went on to not only do that with the Packers, reach the NFC Championship game, but he also did it with the Vikings. Right, right. right. And, right correct, sir. And then in 2004 as well, that was a bad year for Stoney. <laughs> I believe it was like April 4th. This is 2000. No, six. Uh, 2006. The Pistons had the best record in the NBA. Yeah. They went down to Miami and they won. And he said uh, the, the, he buried the Miami Heat. The Miami Heat are dead or something. Yeah. Like that. yeah. And uh, they went on to win the NBA championship. So what I love about this is for for those at home, we're on Zoom, right? And I'm, I'm watching the Gov. And uh, there are no notes that you're referring to. You are pulling these out of Great moments and memories that you have with Stoney. That is amazing. Well, to me. well, we milked them for years too. <laughs> I mean, I played that stuff five thousand times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Am I out of uh, here, Dad? I mean, <laughs> there, there, there have been others as well. I mean, uh, well, you buried the Tigers in 2012. Yes, I'm I, had like, to, I had to have my um, chest hair shaved <laughs> from the old, the old, the old studio. <laughs> Oh, you can, you, can, you can find that on YouTube. That was a shave. Oh, I'm going right now. And who shaved it? Oh, it wasn't shaved. It was oh, there was a wax. Wax? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, Did you yeah. bring in oh, someone? No. Yeah, they like brought, a professional? Yeah, they were something like they were okay. they were professional. Oh yeah, it hurt. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, professional yeah. or not. <laughs> Was I, don't know, but I was like, who is it? Was Tom doing it? No. Like, you know, no, like. No, no, no. <laughs> 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 Never. Jeff is laughing so loud he had to back away from the microphone. <laughs> yeah, you can probably we can, you can find that. I'm sure that's on uh, YouTube 97. Oh, I'm looking. Oh, oh boy. So, uh, speaking of, of, of stuff like that, Jensen, have you ever seen. And John, have you ever seen the uh, the video when I lost a, uh, a, I guess it was a bet on the air, television-wise? Well, no, I did it, I, exactly, I did it on the radio, but the payoff was on television, where I said that uh, this is when, during the Rich Rod era, where I guaranteed that they would beat Purdue. They lost, and I had to do the uh, Channel 7 sports that next Sunday night or whatever, dressed as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely up there. I've shown that. I've the seen that. Out. Oh, yeah. Yes. I, uh, I'm definitely, uh, at our first commercial break, we'll be Googling <laughs> Mike Stone video as much as I possibly can. And then we had one more, and this was the 2016 Michigan season, and Stoney was really playing it safe under the Harbaugh regime as it got underway. And I think they overachieved a little bit maybe his first year. They won nine regular season games. So the next year, I, I was feeling very confident. I thought the schedule set up well, and I thought they were, I, I knew they had a 
a talented defense. So me and Sony got into it and I live on the air and I think he really didn't think it through that clearly maybe. And I got him trapped in a spot where I said, okay, I guarantee Michigan wins 10 games in the regular season. And they did. And then so Stoney, the bet was either I had to grow out my hair for six months and never cut it, all hair. Every, no no shaving, no nothing. Or Stoney did. And of course, Michigan won 10 games. It did, it, what, then they start 10 and 0. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they went to Iowa and right. lost. Um, so anyway, Stoney had to grow out his hair. And we got to about two months into it. And I let him out of it because he looks so bad. <laughs> 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 it was growing in the eyebrows. Seriously. Oh, like, yeah. There was curls. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. And the ear hair? Oh, ear hair. Ear hair is the worst. My ear is bad anyway, but man, it was ridiculous. I definitely. That's my worst fear, right? Is as I get older, right? Is 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 the ear hair or the nose hair? I am so conscious of that. It, it just I, there's there's so many things about my appearance. I just don't really I concern myself with. I don't want to say I don't care. I just don't concern myself with, but. I don't want to be that dude that's walking down the, the or that's standing next to Heather at some point and she looks over and she says, my God, he's got a bush growing out of his ear. Yeah. That's disgusting. Yeah. Right. <laughs> my ear hair is mostly doesn't come out of the, like, the ear, you know, drama. Right? Yeah. yeah. Mine's more on the lobes, go all the way around. And I got to take, yes. I have that little shave. shave right a lot of men them. have. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, it, you cut their hair. That's what most barbers are. I mean, they're going to make sure they get all the ear hair, too. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's kind of like but, like women have to deal with, you know, the monthly thing and giving uh -huh. birth. We only have to deal with, like, we, we, lose, <laughs> we lose our hair. Most men, <laughs> most men, hold on. Most men lose their hair on their head, but they gain the, but they don't. They gain hair on their ears and nose, which makes no sense. And whatsoever. women give birth. Like, like these, right. <laughs> like, right. women have women have the that monthly thing. thing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's God's way of thinking that uh, if, if you believe in if you believe in God, if you believe in God's a man, it's God's way of being. All right, we'll give you guys a little something, you know, because the women get you know basically screwed. They have to go through a lot more painful things than you guys do. Right. That that's fair. Right. I, yes, I, I agree. I've seen childbirth, and I would I don't want any part of that. No, I, I, I give, I, look, when we go to the doctor, we don't have to get into stirrups. I mean, come on, for the most part. That's true. I'm trying to give you guys credit. How about Heather? I know you things? are. I, I know you are, but it just, to me, they're uncomparable. You I, losing I, some head hair I, and I us uh, that's, that's going point. through child labor. It's yes. God's little I mean, joke. Yeah. Yeah. Well, last week Heather admitted on the air that she doesn't like boobs. I don't like boobs. And then I think that's something we even can't deal with because of the uh, the back issue. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. It was something that, that everybody loves, but I hate. And one of my things was boobs. I just don't like them. I'm sick of them. I'd rather not have them. I'd rather not deal with them all the time. Well, you can do something about that. Eh, no, I'm not going to do that. Okay. I, mean, I know, you know people have had reductions. <laughs> 